Okay, hey guys. I have no idea what the lighting is going to be like. We are on the floor of the new art room. There's almost no furniture in here. Most of the art supplies are still packed because we're waiting on the new flooring to come in. And so anyway, I got asked a lot over my move uh, to the new house um, what kind of art supplies I packed, what is my uh, sort of art supply bug out bag look like, um, and what's in it. I really had and do have generally these three bags um, either packed or ready to pack all the time. This particular one and this one are always packed. This one is sort of just waiting in the wings when I need to pack something or in, in, in the mood to take other supplies that won't fit in here or that I don't want to put in here. So anyway, we're going to start with this one. Ugh, they're all heavy. Every single one of them just weighs a ton. Okay, so this particular one, let me turn the viewfinder a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Oh, maybe. Let's see, let's try that way. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay. So this is my daily sketch bag, and this um, usually sits um, next to the sofa downstairs. I went and got it just now. Um, and during this travel, um, this bag stayed out where I can get it. Um, that being said, I'm woefully behind in my daily sketches, like, mo like months. We're talking months. But it's going to be a while before I can unpack the majority of the art room, so it gives me a chance to maybe work on this now that we're at a place at the new house where the um, majority of unpacking that we need to do to live is done. I am going to unpack the art supplies out of their cardboard boxes, in, and, but I'm going to keep them in the spare room where they're at and um, just kind of stack them on the floor just so I can get rid of the cardboard. Those of you who have moved know exactly what I mean. I know you do. Um, so I still won't be able to get to them, so this is going to be something I'm going to be working on. And my um, traveler's notebook, which I have to catch up on too because I'm about, you know, two and a half weeks behind because I didn't do anything in it during the moving process. It was just too hard, but I've got a stack of things over that way that are on the table where the computer is at, which is the one thing the set up in this room. Um, and I have to work on that. I might actually take the whole thing and put it in a basket and bring it downstairs later. Anyway. Um, so this is, I made this case and this is a pattern that you can get online and if you know how to sew, I will link the video um, and or pattern regarding this case in the description below. I did make a video on this that has all the links in it. I'll try to find it and link that. That would be the easiest thing. Um, and I made it big and oversized. The original pattern is smaller so that I could do this and unzip it all the way. And then when I'm sitting at the table next to the sofa or on at the dining room table or at the coffee table, I have kind of a, um, a desktop. It's got a little dashboard here where journals I'm working in sit and I don't, does this one even have anything in it? No, see, this is May. Told you I was behind. Um, I think this one has some stuff in it, yeah. Um, so I have um, extra notebooks back here or bigger ones like this big one that I'm working in. I have the ones that I'm currently supposed to be working in and haven't been here. A variety of pens and crayons. These are my favorite Bible Gel High Glider crayons. They're a highlighter meant for Bible journaling and I really love them. I have a couple of metallic um, Bible journaling crayons. I think they're from Recollections that somebody gave me. I've got some a uh, couple of white paint pens, some of my favorite black pens, including the Van Bic Crystal. Um, Pilot Varsity fountain pens in a few different colors, because it does come in colors. These are a variety of kind of gel pens. Some are from the Muji store and some are from Daiso. Both are Japanese, um, sta Japanese stores that sell stationery. Um, but any of your favorite gel pens in a, a sort of a rainbow of colors. In these pockets I have um, a ske pencil sketching set. Uh, another journal, because you know I need another journal like a hole in the head. 
<laughs> some lettering stencils. I, what, during the move, I just shoved things in here, so there's like a lot of journals in here because I had uh, different intentions than <laughs> it just didn't get done. Extra um, daily drawing prompts I haven't done, and I think I have to print. Yeah, I have to print September because I have everything printed up until September because uh, I will do that at some point. I have a little bag here with some washi tape in it and a glue stick and a credit card for like smoothing things down that I'm gluing. And this smaller pocket has just note paper, a smaller lettering stencil, um, a teeny tiny Shannon Green um, repurposed billboard vinyl notebook. Isn't it the cutest thing on the planet? I don't know what I'm going to draw on it yet, that's why it's still blank, but it's so cute. Um, a mini watercolor kit. And I, there are two water brushes in here, by the way, and some of these pens that are in here are water soluble, so I can use a water brush to blend them. And I do have a pair of travel scissors in here. A plain old number two jumbo, jumbo I'm sorry, a 4B jumbo Faber-Castell pencil, just a plain pencil, some sticky notes, a rag, a soft rag for blending graphite or just dusting off my hands, and a pencil sharpener. I also have this black pen, which is Works well, but it's just really cool feather-shaped pen that I got at a um, store when I was in Lake Tahoe last. I really love the pen. So that's one, and that's just the one, again, that sits next to the sofa downstairs. And I frequently will use this drawing kit downstairs to work in my traveler's notebook because it really does have all the supplies I need to work in the traveler's notebook, and what's not in here is in the traveler's notebook itself. And right now it is really, it's really puffy. I really need to clean it out. Okay, so that's that one. This is my regular travel case. This goes with me anytime I travel. Um, the exception being some of the day trips that we went on to go house hunting. Um, it's a little vintage leather suitcase. I think it was originally a cosmetic case. I, it has no brand name markings on it. I don't know. Um, I got it at a small little antique shop. I, I probably paid way too much for it, but I love it. I'm always on the lookout for another one. So if somebody sees something like this, let me know, please. It has sort of an expandable top. It's usually pretty full. Now, when I do travel, I usually put my traveler's notebook in here, and I did put it in here so that you guys can see. It's a really tight right now, which is how it usually is when I'm traveling. So I made this fabric strap with clips to help hold it closed because again, it is a vintage suitcase and so I usually put a significant amount of stress on it. So I want that to help it stay closed and not break. That being said, it holds a lot. This is my Chic Sparrow Traveler's Notebook in its dust cover that I made for it. And, um, oh, there's something else I need to stick in there. Um, in the Traveler's Notebook, I usually keep a few um, collage papers, things, especially if somebody has sent me something recently, like this got sent to me by Peg Robinson right before I moved, so that's in here. There's extra calendar sheets in here for the upcoming months of the year. I have credit cards of um, washi tape and some business cards of mine in case I'm out somewhere and somebody wants business cards. Um, stickers different kinds of stickers, more washi, a giant paper clip. Um, also some die cuts. Uh, yeah, here we go. So I also have uh, various die cuts for my stash, including just pictures, um, flora and fauna, these cute little panda bears, some feathers, super cute stuff. I have a um, white gel pen, a black ballpoint. These are my dashboards that I use to pad the paper in between when I'm working in here. Um, sometimes I press really hard with the pen and I don't necessarily want my marks to go through to the adjacent page. So I have some little sort of protective sheets or if I'm doing something messy. You see me use these if you watch my videos. I have bigger ones and I use in my journals too. And this is a signature I made out of um, a paint um, pamphlet. So I'm actually working in that as my next, for the next month or two, as my traveler's notebook journal. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. Has been so far. 
And then after that I have a white one. And then after that I don't know what I'm going to do because everything is packed. So hopefully I unpack before then. And then back here I have again my favorite pen, the Pilot Varsity. And that fits in here. And usually what I do when I'm collecting things, if I don't have time to put them in the notebook, as I just do this. And there's a giant stack of stuff over that way I need to do that with. So this is the stuff I always bring. Sometimes I don't bring the Traveler's Notebook and I just collect bits and pieces and bring them home and do it at home. Um, sometimes I do. This stuff that's in here always comes with me when I'm traveling. This is my travel sketch kit. This is a, again a Shannon Green um, Custom Keeper. This is one of the ones that she has that um, comes with, there's some, um, some of these in here, uh, the tool keepers. I made pockets to go in here, but I do think she might have pockets now. Um, I made pockets. She sells vinyl scraps you can sell on your sewing machine. I have some of my favorite pens in here, which work for not only drawing in the little sketchbook, but if I want to use any of these in the traveler's notebook, I have them. There's a palette. I actually stuffed this in here recently. Obviously, I've not used it yet. It's still in plastic. There's a small jar of gel medium. It's in a Ziploc bag because sometimes they want you to take these kind of things out at the TSA. So, um, and or you don't want it to leak in your suitcase. We'll get to that in a minute. This is a travel water cup. Favorite. This is by Faber Castell. It's cute. Uh, baby wipes. Um, these are my travel watercolor brushes. Uh, not the like Pentel water brushes. These are actual water brush brushes. These are uh, Midas Touch. There's a flat, a filbert, and a round, and they work like this. And they're really, I really like the weight and feel of them when I'm painting. This is my travel watercolor case, and this is by um, the people at Expeditionary Art. It's called an art toolkit. They would make a big one and a little one. And it really does fit all of, if you, all you want to do is watercolor, you really only need this in a journal. And this is my watercolor travel journal. Um, everything fits in here. You've got a variety of black pens, a white gel pen, a ruler, a little piece of a credit card to use not only as a straight edge, but a scraper, a couple of clips to hold your journal open, uh, a mister, some water brushes. This is um, a little needleless syringe for filling the water brushes. Um, some colored pencils and crayons. Um, the white crayon is great for resist. Uh, a small uh, ballpoint pen. I probably picked that up at a bingo or something. I pick these kind of things up, at, you know, and I, I'm like, ooh, that'll fit in there. <laughs> um, behind here, there's pockets back here. And back here, I have a piece of a kneaded eraser, some table salt, because those are both, um, uh, the table salt's great for sprinkling in the wet paint and gives you interesting texture. And the kneaded eraser will really do a good job getting the pencil lines off if you want to get them off. A piece of plastic wrap, because again, you can put it in a wet paint to give you an interesting texture. Some wax paper to protect sheets, a piece of a paper towel. It all fits back here. And then I have a travel watercolor kit that's in a metal case that I put together from a couple different sources. This is a mixture of Koi and Daniel Smith. And these are the colors I like to bring with me when I'm traveling. And then um, I have the small Winsor Newton teeny tiny travel watercolor brush that I think you can only get if you get their small travel case, which is, I love this little brush. It's great for details. I do have a second one of these small art toolkits, and sometimes I will grab it if I want to take a second palette of cover colors with me. Um, say I'm going somewhere where I'm going to be in the desert and I want to take my, I do have a palette of desert colors, so I want to take that with me. Or maybe I am going to be going to some sort of an art retreat and I want to take my skin tone palette or metallic palette with me. So I will bring another, the other one of these and I will take something else out like maybe the Custom Keeper. Uh, this is my 
um, travel watercolor journal. I only work on this when I'm traveling. And I usually in the hotel room. If you follow me on social media, you've seen some of these. So there's quite a ways to go in here, but it lives in the bottom. And then this cute little thing, this is from Muji, which again is a Japanese store. They sell stationery and other items, clothing and other items. I love this thing. Um, it fits a lot of stuff in it. So all of the other like basics that you're gonna need for journaling um, or travel arting. So on this side, I've got some different kinds of rulers triangular rulers, this kind. I don't know what this is called. I wasn't a math genius in school or anything, but you know, half round. It's great for making shapes. I have some paint, more paint brushes. I'll throw a couple bottles of um, like Dina Wakely paint in the case, um, but sometimes I just want these to spread glue with or something. I've got another uh, different, couple different kinds of pens and pencils. I've got a bone folder, a pair of travel scissors, um, uh, what do you call it? Palette knife. Um, this thing. Not this thing. I just use it for scratching and painting stuff. Uh, a straight edge. And then on this side, some tape runner, another glue stick, stapler, a mini ink pad, a date stamp. I'm of a certain age, so reading glasses. I'm not sure they're strong enough, but they're better than nothing. A teeny tiny bottle of glue. I just This is an old travel bottle of lotion or something. I washed it out and it's got um, tacky glue in it. I do always bring these. So sometimes I use those other, water, those other paintbrushes for these. These are my travel set of uh, Neocolors. And they're great. You can put them on there and then get one of those water, those brushes wet and then spread them around. I have a couple of straws. I forget why they're in here, but I do think that's something I picked up somewhere or something. Um, and then I have a couple of clips and some stencils and another card to push things around with or push things into paint. This little thing holds a lot of stuff. and it wasn't expensive. If I can find a link online for some of these things for you guys, I will link that in the description. I forgot to put the mister back in there, so let's get that back in there. And I'll show you how it really does all fit. Now, if on the way home I have collected a lot of things, I never, ever, ever count on them going in this case. Um, they just go in my backpack or something else that I'm carrying. But this will fit in here. Now, the Traveler's Notebook does make it really fat, but it does fit. And then I'll just put the protective strap. I've gotten so many comments on this case just from strangers in the, in the airport, it's funny. Um, and everybody wants to know, where'd you get the little case? Yeah, it was at a vintage shop. Okay. Okay, the camera ran out of batteries. <laughs> so we had to move a little bit so I could plug it in. So we're, the lighting actually might be a little better because we're in front of a window. This is a needlework case. And I've always loved this case because I thought it looked like a handbag. And it's by Creative Options. I don't know if they make it anymore. I've actually had this bag a really long time. I, um, fun fact, I usually have two. This is the bigger one, and then they make a smaller one. I um, got rid of the smaller one a long time ago. I just, every time I want to use it, I use the bigger one. All right. And I use it for all kinds of things. Right now it's full of uh, mixed media supplies, but um, I have been known to take it full of crochet supplies or if I'm just do, working on needlework projects at the moment when I'm traveling and I, I'll fill it with a bunch of stuff. So let me show you how this bag works. 
So the first thing is in this front pocket, which opens like this. Right now, I have it filled with a variety of pens and pencils, some erasers, and including, of course, Pilot Varsity pens, um, um, feud ball pens, Uniball Signo pens in both black and white and brown, uh, multi pens, paint pens, uh, but there's a big pocket here and then there's this little um, side here that has all of these elastic bands for putting tools on. Then this opens and you have access to the main part of the bag. In here I have my Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher, cannot go anywhere without that. Um, I'll show you. Can you see how much stuff I have jammed in there? All right, so this is like the bag that in addition to the other ones that I needed to have with me over the move, I have some rags, a water cup, actually, and a jar that I can use. I have another journal that I was, I've been working in. This is more watercolor play. Some of these have been on YouTube. Oops, sticky. This is um, the latest one that was on Instagram that you all want a tutorial on, which is the Rainbow Drippy Anatomical Heart. I'll be working on it soon, hopefully. Um, heat tool. I really prefer to work with watercolor with the heat tool. I don't always, but I prefer it. I'll get to this in a minute. Um, some tacky glue, a um, spray bottle for watercolors, a paper trimmer, two big giant watercolor palettes. This one is Daniel Smith, and this, this one is Schminky. Um, so, and these are big palettes with a lot of paint in them. These are both huge. I have two tiny journals in here that I can use for mixed media work or collage. These are um, both moleskins. They're teeny tiny moleskins. Oh, sorry, this is a lectern, 1917. It's a teeny tiny one that you can do little teeny mixed media work in. It's a cute one. It's cute to work in. It's fast, you know, because you can do the pages really quickly with just little scraps. So I have that one. And you see I have these little dashboards in all my journals to protect the other pages I've done already. This is a bigger one, and this is this electron too. No, this is a moleskin. This is a moleskin 2017 diary. And again, see? Page protectors. But you, this is great, again, to work um, with little bits and pieces that you can collect from here and there. And it doesn't take too much. You can do them quickly when you're on the go. You don't need a lot of supplies. These are some things I've collected, including an invoice, but the labels are sticky. And this is, um, this is from my niece's wedding. And this was one of the party favors for the kids. And of course I went, oh, that's cute. I want one. So they had these little coloring books and crayons for the kids. I thought was so cute. And the crayons are right here, wedding crayons. So those, that was cute. And this bag is big enough to stuff little things like that in. Okay, this is my paper cutting kit. And I really had intentions for cutting paper, and I may still, it's gonna be a long while before I'm able to unpack the art room and get the, until we get the floor in here. It's gonna be four to five weeks. So, um, and I'm gonna be traveling to an art retreat soon, and I think I'm gonna bring this with me and take something out of the travel bag so I can bring this. But I've been selling some of these on my Etsy shop, and um, you've all seen a, 
couple of videos if you've watched my channel on doing these. I'll link one of them in the description below. But these are just all hand cut out of cardstock. They're fun to do. And then once I get some designs I like, I scan them into my silhouette and I have it cut sets of them for you all so I can sell them in the Etsy shop for you all and you don't have to be bothered cutting them if you don't want. But this is a storage folder I keep the cut pieces in. There is some cardstock in here. Um, my favorite um, um, cutting knife, which is an Ulfa knife with a small art blade, a pencil, a white gel pen, those are for tracing a design onto the paper. I do have some black paper in here, so for that you need the white and a small cutting mat. And it all fits in this little case. This is from Target from the dollar spot, and I think it's intended for like travel documents, but it works super well for this. And then I still have room for my rags, my water bottle, my my tacky glue and my cup of stuff and a heat tool. I love this bag, it really holds a lot. And then I'll show you about the other side. So then you also can turn it around. Again, my bags are always so heavy, this one is totally heavy. And look at that. So you have you have all of this. And so on this side, I have a, this pocket, you can take this off. So if you have tools or something in here, you can take it off and put it on your work desk. I have um, some paint brushes, including some, these are all watercolor paint brushes because this has got the watercolor paint in it. And I don't intend on having anything else in here. It's got a, um, what do you call it? Stabilo pencil, a white crayon for resist, a regular pencil, two clips, and a piece of a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, which is great for lifting paint. A variety of big crystal gel pen, uh, ballpoint pens, some gel pens, and I actually forget what's in here. Oh yeah, watercolor pencils, because this is a watercolor kit, right now anyway. And then this whole board here, comes out so you also have access to this on the other side. It's the best bag. I don't know if they still make it. If they do, I'll link it below. If they don't, um, I don't know what <laughs> to tell you. But it's by Creative Options and I'll try to find a link below. It's a great bag and if they don't make it anymore, that's too bad. Um, because it's a good option to the other travel art case. This would make a great travel bag. Um, so that's it. That's what's been in my bug out bags and what I've been working with during this whole crazy move. I will um, be starting to film a few tutorials here and there when I can and have a chance for you all. Uh, thanks for sticking with me and don't forget to go out and have a great day. Do something nice for yourself. Maybe somebody else too because you deserve it and so do they. That's it. See you later. Bye guys.